Hi, this is Charlie Montatiello with another video on making and playing Native American flutes, or in this particular case, something around that area. Um, a lot of you guys, uh, subscribers and viewers and everybody, have found me to, uh, to be helpful in questions here and there. And I love it when y'all send me questions because it makes me think that you're, you're actually doing something and there's other people on the other side of this camera. Um, keep in mind there are other flute makers out there and some really great ones too. I can tell you a bunch of them are good friends that I've met. Um, I'll be discussing a little bit more in a little About Me video that we're uh, putting on pretty soon. But uh, I wanted to let you know that of course there are a lot of uh, other flute makers out there. We all do things differently. Um, I'm sure you can find other people that have another way of doing things. But I know that a lot of you have come to understand the way that I've done them and I'm, I try to make them as uh, easy to explain as possible. In this particular case, we're making a flute stand, and I wanted to do this because a lot of you, though you may not be interested in making a flute, you might be more interested in how the flute is made, um, and you may think that you don't have the skills to create a flute, although I probably would disagree. Um, I know that you can do this flute stand, and the flute stand is something that I think that everybody, flute makers and what have you uh, or alike, will probably really uh, find some, uh, some use in, and the fact that you can do it is very simple to do. But anyway, we're going to start off with something that I bought from a local craft store. It's just a plaque pine oval. You can get a plaque piece of wood um, that uh, is square, is uh, some kind of Greek shape they call them, and round, circle, whatever. You can get all kinds. But basically what the plaque wood is, it's a piece of pine that's in a nice little shape, and the edges have been somewhat rounded. Now, this one is a... I'd like to call it an economy version because the rounding wasn't really done that well. But uh, still, it fits my needs and it's very inexpensive. I think this one cost me about $2. So uh, the project that we're going to make here can cost anywhere from, say, 3 or 4 bucks on up to $20 would be a super humdinger, fantastic, nice one. So anyway, so we start off with our little plaque like this. And then the next thing we're going to have to find and uh, track down is something round. Now this is a piece of sawgrass that I have cut and in the past I always used bamboo or river cane or sawgrass to make this next step um, and I split it in half. It's so easy to split bamboo in half. You basically hold it together, put a little knife on the edge of it, bump the knife with your hand, keep your fingers out of the way and it's split. Um, I used to use these for this particular step but this time I'm going to use something I found laying around the shop that I thought hey this might be a good use for it. It's one of my flute kits that didn't make it through the process. You see, there's dozens of flute kits up here that we've been working on and making, and I actually took a break from this um, whole day of flute kit making just so I could show you guys uh, what I'm going to do with this stand and how you can make your own. So this is one of my flute kit flutes. This is actually the mama of all of them. <laughs> see, it's basically the, uh, it's the one that I use as a pattern to make all of my other flute kits. So uh, I'm not going to destroy this one, but I had some that were chipped. And you see how this one's curved a little bit? I wouldn't send you one like that. I kept it for myself. It's actually the first one I made, a little crooked. I think that crook may have happened afterwards because of this knot here, but nothing to worry about. So set this guy aside. Here is one of the flute kit pieces. It's one of the halves that I've just rounded out. And you can do this easily with another piece of pine. You can do it with, you know, just about anything you can find. You can find a piece of PVC and use it for this process, or you could always uh, use bamboo or river cane like I used to. I went ahead and cut three of them because we're going to make a three-tier flute stand. One thing you want to do is make sure you sand your plaque wood, make sure all these edges are as smooth as you can possibly get them, because when they ship them to you or to your local craft store or hobby store, Walmart, Target, wherever you find these things at, uh, out, out of the United States, I know there's a lot of good craft stores, even your um, lumber yards can do such a thing. They may have some plaque woods laying around. Um, but you need to sand them to make sure it's nice and smooth. And then you're going to find out where you want to place your tiers, because it's a three-tier flute stand, meaning there's going to be three levels of flute stand there. And what I've done is just kind of sit in them like this. I think I'm going to space them a little bit apart from one another. It's not necessary to use a tape measure, you can if you want to, but uh, since it's your eyes that are going to be looking at these flutes on this flute stand, sometimes it's better uh, measuring these things with your eyes because you're going to eventually see it, but just take your time in doing so. That's where most people make their mistakes 
because they do things too hastily. So I've got them placed where I want them right now. If I decided to, just to make sure I don't mess them up, I might make me a little pencil mark on each side, just like that. We can come back and sand that off later. And uh, that way we know where they're gonna go. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is find yourself a dowel. Once again, bought this dowel at the same hobby and craft store that I got the plaque wood from. You might even find some little round pieces of wood. I'm not sure, but I'm sure they've got some bamboo or something like that. So here's your dowel. I've cut it up already into some predefined sizes just from experience of making these. I don't really sell them on our website anymore. We used to, we used to sell a lot of them. But uh, these days we like people to, uh, to do things the way they want to rather than the way I want them to. <laughs> so we've cut three different levels and I can measure these for you and give you an idea if you're interested. Although the measurements don't really matter. Once again, it's all personal taste and how they look that counts because that's what's going to count in the long run. But let's go ahead and measure them just for the sake of doing so. And you see we have these three different sizes. The shortest one's about three inches. The middle one is about four and a half inches. The longest one is about six and a half inches. In case you're curious, my piece of plaque wood here, a lot of guys at home are saying, oh, I bet he's never going to tell me that. But yeah, plaque wood was about 11 and a half inches this way. And then roughly eight and three quarters inches that way. Uh, doesn't really matter. It can be square, oval, round, whatever. You know, you can actually do this on a sphere if you wanted to do the same thing. Um, and then my little braces here, these guys are about three and a quarter inches. Honestly, the wider the better because when you place your flute on them, you want it to balance. If you misplace it a little sideways, you don't want it to tip over. And three and a quarter inches does a pretty good job. So the next thing we're going to do is go over to the drill and, and drill some holes. I'm going to set these dowels aside and we'll go get started on that. There are a number of ways that you can drill these holes out. Um, myself, I sometimes drill them all out at once, meaning I leave my little cradle here in place, hold it down, and drill the holes. Sometimes I drill the holes in the cradles and I come back and, and I mark them through the holes and go back and drill the plaque separately. Whatever it is that you do, you need to make sure that the holes here are in the same placement that they are there. And I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way. This drill bit I'm using is a 3 8 inch drill bit. The reason being is we have a lot of 3 8 inch dowels around the shop because we use them for our eagle whistles. Can I show them an eagle whistle? Here's one of our eagle whistles. 3 8 inch dowels. I don't know if it's too blurry. So uh, you can kind of see what we do here. We've got lots of those 3 8 inch dowels laying around the shop. Let's see what this one sounds like. Well, pop my eardrums. <laughs> anyway, so let's see. The next thing we're going to do, like I say, is just go ahead and drill these holes out. You can drill them out in a number of different positions. Wide, narrow, whatever you like. There we go. One thing you don't want to do is go all the way through your piece of clock wood. Notice what I did, I drilled them into that one piece, and then I'm going to come back and clean these holes up just a little bit. You see, a skilled woodworker at this point would take a straight edge and they would mark their holes, or let's see, let's use a round edge. <laughs> anyway. I always got to do something different than everybody else. They would mark their holes as such so that everything lined up just right. You don't have to do that. You can if you want to. It's completely up to you. Um, if you did that, then your next question is, how am I going to get the holes in my little cradles just right? Well, there are so many different ways you can do things. That's the reason I stress at the beginning of this video that you don't have to trust just my judgment. Of course, being that we're in business, I don't want you to drift away from me too far. <laughs> you can just trust my judgment if you want to, but you don't have to. These holes we want to drill out all the way, remember? If you notice, I put a piece of wood under it. It keeps it from tearing it up too bad, but this one got a little buggered up anyway. There 
go. Let's drill these next ones. And honestly, how long is this going to take for you to create? It's completely up to you. There may be some very artistic people out there that want to do this in some kind of crazy deco or what have you. It's completely up to you. I'll tell you, there are a lot of interesting finishes that you can use on it. And that's where I like to get more exotic, I guess, on my flute stand. So, there's all those pieces. I'm going to go ahead and move something back out of my way and drill these extra couple of holes. Is it possible to do all this without a big fancy drill press? Absolutely. I have done without fancy equipment most of my life and I know how to do everything with alternative tools. You can use a small drill, a hand drill, you don't even have to drill it. You know, if you wanted to do this a slightly different way, um, you know, you can uh, just rely on the glue holding the dowels in place, but we are talking about in most cases you guys get some really nice flutes and you want to make sure they're protected. So there is that step. We're going to go back over to gluing it together and I'll show you how the rest of it finishes up. Okay, so here we are back to basically what may look like square one. It's not. <laughs> um, we've got our three little pieces here. We've got our dowels and we've got our plaque board. That's really all there is to it. I mean, it's, it's really so simple. You can put some glue into your holes there. Um, I'd like to put the big ones back on this back place here first because I made this part a little closer to the front for a reason. So let's uh, kind of smear some of the glue around in there and do that. And we'll drop a little bit on the end. Okay, I know they're kind of funky shaped a little bit right now, but we're going to fix that in just a second. Go ahead and put a drop here, and a drop there, and a drop here. Make a little flutes. I keep saying them, I can't stop thinking about my friend that compared me to Bob Ross. Which is a, kind of an interesting idea, but a great honor to me nonetheless. Okay. And then let's see, I'm reasonably straight. A bit of glue. So I'm just putting glue right on the side of it. A lot of items that you buy in your stores, retail st stores, uh, you'd be surprised how very little work goes into a lot of them. Just trying to grab some extra glue. And some things that you find in your retail stores that we take for granted every day have tons of work in them to them, even though they're inexpensive. But this is a solid flute stand, I have got to tell you. Little drop. You now you hear Pandora playing in the background. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and grab a hammer real quick. Just to bump these down. Uh, that went down about a quarter of an inch. That one too. Nice. Nice. I think that's pretty solid there. And then the next step is pretty simple. Just kind of get it started on these little guys. Just want to make sure that you're going in the right direction here. And what we're going to do is put just a little bit of glue around the edges, just like that. Kind of eyeball it a little bit. I think I grabbed my hammer again.
hammer is always over at the lathe. Seems like the only place we ever use it. And now you notice this one's a little bit low and this one's a little bit high because I didn't really take the time to make sure my holes were the exact depth. It's okay. It's not a problem. The most important thing is that it sits level like that. And then little drop, little drop, smooth this around the edge. second here. Pretty nice. We'll drop, we'll drop, a bit around the edges. And then, since this is a really tall one, this is one that you want to be very careful about, making sure that it's nice and straight. When I say straight, there are so many different places that you've got to be straight on. If you hit it too hard, too, you may crack. There's so many things to consider, but I think all in all, it's a pretty simple project to do. And uh, I'm looking at it from a couple of different angles here. You want to make sure that they're straight this way, and this way, and this way. And then you want to make sure that they're straight this way, this way, and this way, meaning that they're not leaning too far in or out or what have you. And I think that looks pretty good. And then, uh, like I say, eyeball all this stuff and make sure it's exactly where you want it. Next step, take some sandpaper, smooth it off, we have an event we're going to this weekend. This would make a nice little display on my table, I think, for the event. And there's the basics of this guy, it's not really that difficult to make. I'm going to go ahead and stain it a little bit. i wipe some of this extra glue off. You can also use that uh, sign acrylic glue, super glue. You can use school glue, Elmer's glue, whatever kind of glue you can find. Hide glue. Food glue, sandwich glue, blue shish kebabs. Just kidding. Anyway, we'll go ahead and stain the whole thing with a little bit of special walnut stain. You guys are thinking, gosh, he's really sloppy. I've just worked with stain for so long, you know, I know not to care <laughs> if it drips or anything. They tell you one thing on the instructions. People that use this stuff on a daily basis may tell you something else. The beginner will tell you their own rendition of how to do this. And I've used a lot of stain. I can tell you the way that they use stain in factories is they either dip it or they just slather a lot on like I'm doing right now and come back to it and wipe it clean. And then you're done with the stain. couldn't find a paintbrush to show you how to do this, so I thought, hey, I'm going to use one of my rags. Some stain may not be safe to get on your skin, like alcohol-based stains and the other types of acrylic stains. The bottom probably doesn't matter so much. It's up to you. How often people are going to be picking this thing up and looking at the bottom of it, I don't know. But uh, sometimes you never can tell. Okay. Almost finished. Make sure you get all those spots. You'd be surprised having this thing up on your mantelpiece and tiny Timmy comes out and says, Hey, you missed a spot. <laughs> he has a better vantage point and viewpoint of anybody else. And he can see that spot you missed. So there, let's see, make sure I didn't miss anything. Looks good. Let's get one more rag. 
this way. And just wipe it off. So however long this video is, you can subtract maybe 35 or 45 seconds. And that's about how long it took to make this stand. A lot of you are thinking, oh gosh, why bother making flutes for a living? You can just make flute stands. You can. You really can. There's a good business doing it. And uh, I think that uh, somebody might decide to take this thing the rest of the way one day. But right now, for me, I like doing what I do. And here's my little flute. So there's our flute stand. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that there are nice and interesting ways that you can display your flute, if that's what it is that you're looking to do. A lot of us may display our flute inside of a backpack 24-7 until we get to its location where we play it. Um, you know, I've got flutes all over the house. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, clay flutes, river cave flutes, sawgrass flutes, flutes from this country, flutes from that country. Anyway, so... Uh, this is your display stand. I think you'll like it. Of course, you can always put additional flutes on different tiers all at the same time. Usually, I put the biggest one in the back and so on and so on. But uh, it's a really nice looking, really handsome stand. I'm probably going to go back and spray it with a coat of, of uh, liquid, either polyurethane or, or uh, some type of uh, lacquer. We use a lot of Rust-Oleum lacquers. I'm uh, not being paid by Rust-Oleum or any of these companies that we buy stuff from. But uh, I will tell you that it's been really good stuff for me. But it is oil-based, so keep that in mind if you're not used to working with oil-based. Um, but, uh, but anyway, this is our stand, and I think it's ready to hit the show this weekend. So if you guys ever have any questions or comments or want to see another type of video about making Native American flutes or something along the lines of making Native American flutes, we might do a flute bag video next or maybe one day in the near future. Um, please let us know. Feel free to... Shoot us an email. You can find us on our website, bluebearflutes.com. Uh, we also have a little contact form on there, kind of a new one, where you can send me a message. Sometimes I get it immediately. Well, I get everything immediately. Sometimes I get it and I answer you immediately, and sometimes it might be 12, 15 hours before I get to respond because of where we're at. But uh, feel free to send us a message there or on our Facebook, which is Blue Bear Arts on Facebook. So once again, this is Charlie Montatuiella signing out, and uh, you guys, happy flute playing and flute making.